quick information messages, error messages, warning messages. Well, notifying users about certain actions is a must in the world of mobile apps. One of the best and the most streamlined ways of showing messages are snack bars. While Flutter provides an out-of-the-box solution, it's kind of clunky, styling it is hard if not impossible, and you need to get hold of the scaffold object, which can sometimes create a lot of boilerplate code. Yes, Flutter's default snack bars are not all that great. All of these drawbacks, though, can be solved with a lightweight library called Flushbar. You can style it to your heart's content, as you can see right now on the screen, and it's very, very simple to use. Is online privacy important to you? Of course it is. With NordVPN you will be safe whether you are at home on your computer or on your phone connected to a public Wi-Fi. NordVPN has got you covered with military-grade encryption, unlimited bandwidth, servers in more than 62 countries around the world, absolutely no logging, easy to use apps for all the different platforms, super fast servers, and NordVPN comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. As if that wasn't enough, now you can get 75% off NordVPN plus an additional month for free if you use the link in the description or use the coupon code RESOCODER during the checkout. Hello, welcome to RESOCODER and let's start off with importing the library over to our new Flutter project. It's called Flushbar, you can get it from the link in the video description on pub.dev, which was previously called pub.dartlang.org, but they've renamed it as of Google I.O. 2019. We want to add it into our dependencies here. Its name is simply Flushbar and currently it's at the version 1.5.0. Oh, in this tutorial you are going to learn how to show different kinds of snack bars together with the default one, because before you learn the flashbar library, I think it's good to know how to display the default snack bars, since sometimes it's not all that necessary to style your snack bars and you just wanna get something done quickly, you wanna show the message to the user quickly, so if you are just building a simple app, the default snack bar may be just enough if you don't want to use a third-party library. However, beyond anything simple, the flush bar really shines over the default snack bar. We are first going to do a little bit of a quick setup in this main.dart file, and also if you want to learn from this tutorial in the written form on resocoder.dart, you can definitely do so by clicking on the link in the video description. In the written tutorial, you can also get the access to the whole project file over from GitHub. So let's just delete this class, my homepage, so uh, delete all of this. And we are also going to change the my app class because we want to display the default snack bar. To show the default snack bar, we are going to display a button inside my home page, which can be clicked to show default snack bars. This is just a simple raised button here. And now this show default snack bar function will simply get the build context because it needs that in order to display the snack bar on the scaffold. Displaying the default snack bar is done by calling a method on the scaffold instance and scaffold can be gotten through inherited widget syntax like this so scaffold of context which grants us the current scaffold and inside show snack bar we are going to just instantiate a new snack bar its content will be set to hello from the default snack bar text and then we also want to have an action which will actually not really do anything it will just say click me. Other than that, we have an error here regarding this center because this raised button needs to be set to be a child. Now it should all work, right? So let's see if it will actually work once we run it on the emulator. So let's try it out and click this show default button. And surely no snag bar is shown. So let's take a look at what's happening. What kind of an error are we getting? inside the console so we're gonna get to the debug console here and we can immediately see that another exception was thrown on the second uh, press of the button that scaffold.off was called with a context that does not contain 
a scaffold. What it basically writes here that we cannot get to the scaffold from the build context because the build context is on the same level inside the widget tree as is the actual scaffold instance. So in simple terms, what we need to do is to somehow nest this button from which we are passing the context over to show default snack bar. There are multiple ways to do it, but we are going to opt in for the simplest way of just uh, control and dot on this raise button. We want to extract widget. We're going to call it uselessly nested button. We are going to say refactor anyway, even though we will probably get errors. Now all we need to do is to move this show default snack bar function over to uselessly nested button stateless widget class. And now we have basically a new uselessly nested button centered inside the my homepage widget, but the button and the function itself, which shows the snack bar, are now in a nested widget in its own widget. So now we should be able to get the scaffold instance, the one specified inside my homepage through inherited widget because we are already one level below the scaffold on the widget tree. So let's check it out. Now we should not get any errors and surely we get the snack bar shown. But doing this, as you probably agree, is kind of a lot of boilerplate. As I've said, there are other ways to manage this kind of a thing that we cannot get to the snack bar because we are in the same level on the widget tree. But either way, you still need to provide a bunch of boilerplate code to circumvent this issue. And this is not necessary with Flushbar. So let's move on to Flushbar, shall we? We are first going to delete the whole content of this file so that we can start off fresh. Before we start working with the flush bar inside main.dar, we first need to import the packages over here. So we want to import flushbar.dart and also flushbar helper.dart. And currently what we have inside main.dart are just a bunch of buttons displayed in a column, which currently do not do anything useful. Also, here is the other way of how you can display the default snack bar. Other than really extracting the widget, you can also just wrap it inside a builder, which provides its own build context. And now you are not going to get any errors when you call show default snack bar, even though you are not in a really nested widget. Let's now move on to the simplest flush bar. We're going to create a new function show simple flush bar, which also gets a build context. And over here, we want to instantiate a new flush bar. And flush bars are really amazing because they have so much potential for customizability and also for the simplicity of use that you should really use flush bars whenever you can. So we first want to specify the message which will be displayed on the flush bar. And there is also a message text property, which you can set, which is basically a text. So you can even style the message which is displayed. But for us, we just want to show a simple message without any kind of a styling. And for that flush bar library provides you with a shorthand where you do not need to specify the text widget, but you can just write the string directly. Then we want to set the main button and even the button can be really styled as you wish, because now it's really a button and not just a snack bar action and buttons can be provided a child text. Also, the text can have some kind of a styling. We're just going to change its color to be the accent color. And also we want to specify arm press callback. Then the flush bar might have a duration set on it. If you specify a duration, it's going to be hidden after that period of time. If no duration is specified, it's basically going to stay on the screen indefinitely until the user dismisses the flush bar manually. And then finally, we mustn't forget to show the flush bar with a cascading operator. So just call two dots and show and pass in the context. The default flush bar will look really the same as the default snack bar, but it's totally stylable and you can show it without any kind of a redundant code. 
Displaying only textual information is not enough though. Many times you want to differentiate between information, warning and error messages and even success messages by using different colors and icons and with flash bar it's really simple. We're now going to display info flash bar and the info flash bar will also display a flash bar obviously so don't forget always to call the show function at the end and we're going to set its title and message title is shown above the message and then we want to set its icon icons are really simple to set on a flash bar we just want to set it to be an info outline so this kind of an icon here and the size will be 28 logical pixels and also we're going to set a color on that icon and we also want to have a left bar indicator i will show you what that does in just a bit also it will be blue and finally we are going to set also the duration to be three seconds so now if we take a look at this app and show info flash bar we can see that it has this blue bar on the left and it also has this icon so everything works properly and it looks really really cool this displaying of information error success and warning messages is a pretty standard practice though for this reason the author of the flashbar library decided to include helpers there are many of them and you can definitely check them out from the official documentation which is linked in the video description and also from the written tutorial which is available on resocoder.com also there is a link in the video description so let's see how to recreate this precise show info flash bar with a flash bar helper in much less code we are simply going to show flash bar helper that create information and now all we need to specify inside this helper is title and message nothing more once we save that and check it out you will not be even able to distinguish between the helper and the real thing without the helper they look really the same because they are the same helper just abstracts these icons and left indicator color for you but you know what let's get crazy with flash bar because this awesome library doesn't end at information messages now we are going to create a rounded floating flash bar with gradient color custom arrival animation and a shadow however flash bar's customization doesn't end at what i have just listed here there are many more properties to modify if you want to get even crazier again you can learn more about them in the documentation so we're going to create floating flush bar and inside of it we want to specify that round padding will be 10 so it will be padded from the side by 10 logical pixels and it's also going to have rounded corners so 8 pixels round then we want to specify the background gradient yes you can specify also a standard background color but we want to go more crazy with it and specify background gradient which is gonna be linear gradient we're going to have two green colors one will be darker and the primary one will be accent and more bright therefore and we also want to specify the stops for the gradient then we also want to have box shadows and you can have box shadows multiple of them actually specified inside a list of box shadows but for us we just want to have one box shadow which will be black its offset will be three and three on x and y axes and the blur radius will be also three pixels and then we want to have this misdirection because all of the previous flush bars could be dismissed manually by swiping down so for example this simple flush bar we can only swipe down also info flush bar we can only swipe down to dismiss it but what we want to do now is so that the flush bar will be dismissible by swiping to the sides so we want to set this misdirection to be flush bar this misdirection dot horizontal then we also want to set forward animation curve the default for this is curves dot ease out but what we want to have here is fast linear to slow ease in what this is going to do is that it arrives fast as it writes here but it's going to slow down over time 
so it ends in a really nice smooth motion. Forward animation curve is for the arrival of the flash bar and then there is also another kind of animation curve which is called reverse animation curve which is for when the flash bar gets hidden from the screen. And finally we obviously need to set the message and also the title and again don't forget to call show. Now when we save this and check it out we have a floating flash bar which arrived really nicely on the screen. It could probably also use some more text here because now it's looking kind of empty. But either way, it's definitely not your default kind of a snack bar because it doesn't even look like a snack bar anymore. It looks like a really custom made widget, but this was all possible with the help of the flash bar library. And also we can dismiss it by swiping to the sides. The bottom line is that if you want to show anything more than just a simple message, Flashbar is a really useful tool in your Flutter arsenal. Don't forget that you can get 70% off NordVPN 3-year subscription if you use the link in the video description or use the coupon code RESOCODER during the checkout. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you join the notification squad and get notified about every single video that I upload here on ResoCoder because I am determined to provide you with the best app development information possible. If this video helped you with displaying beautiful looking custom snack bars, give it a like and also share it with other developers. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.